much for uh, coming here again. Uh, it's our uh, pause time uh, in this very busy week that we are in. And uh, we're very, very privileged and uh, it is an honor for me to introduce our guest speaker for today. Uh, he is a uh, he is the president of a microfinance, so all those who are doing microfinance here may know him. Um, and he's also, he used to be with the first Metro Asset, that's the president. And um, uh, yeah, so he's always been in the financial field. Um, but he's also a very prayerful man, a man of God. Uh, I know him through our uh, community, ang guy ng Pininoon. He's our district coordinator in uh, the central district, <laughs> which is in Metro Manila. Uh, and uh, he gives talks, he gives very good talks, very insightful retreats. He's always our uh, retreat master, especially for uh, the men's retreat. Um, it's very, uh, he has the mind of a uh, very prayerful man. So uh, it's an honor for me to introduce Kuya Eddie Mendoza. Thank you very much. <clears throat> There's an old American Indian saying. Anybody here ever sat around the bonfire? A few, okay. There's an old American Indian saying, small fires bring friends closer. So, kung nalit lang yung apoy, dahil maginaw, nalapit ka sa apoy, hindi mas malapit kayo, no? Malaki yung apoy, ang lahat niya. Uh, this looks like a big fire, <laughs> but it's okay. I hope, I hope uh, that the that the men and women out there in the back who are wanting to be not noticed, and now I'm noticing them, <laughs> will not feel detached or you know uh, excluded from this conversation that we will have this afternoon. Thank you very much for having me, Jing, um, and uh, Joseph. Uh, I'm really impressed that uh, despite uh, the busyness of your schedule, like who's not busy, uh, that you take time out. How often do you do this? Every month. Every month, and you come here every month. Okay, well, I am your pulutan for this month. Sana magbusog kayo. And whatever purpose you have for being here, um, I believe that even before your father met your mother, God already knew that you would be here today. So, siya na ang bahala sa inyo, no, ha? Okay. At uh, siya na rin ang bahala sa akin. And uh, I just pray that uh, at the end of this session, that God will be glorified. Is that okay with you? This question lang, just so that I have an idea. Uh, I understand there's a regular mass here, as in every Wednesday, every Wednesday so Friday. Wednesday and first Friday. And uh, some of you are regular attendees of that. Okay. Do we have any Christians, the non-Catholics here? Okay. All right. Well, all right. More than half. Okay. All right. Um, and. Uh, ask myself, why would I come to a session like this every month? Well, you may have good reason to come here because the last speaker was good and the speaker before him was even better. So I just pray that they come back next month, okay? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> if you will not appreciate what I talk about, they will not invite me again. So you're safe. Um, when Joseph asked me to, to speak here and gave me free for all topic, I said, Mahirap yan, ano, yung anything under the sun. But then, today I chose to talk about Jehoshaphat's prayer. Um, I'm, okay, just a disclosure. I will lower your expectations first, okay, so that we can raise your appreciation later. Um, when giving a talk like this, there are, in my opinion, two ways to address the audience. One is, yung, uh, yung, wala lang, nandiyan lang, ano ha? 
okay? And dahil this is voluntary, you're not here, you're not victims of, uh, you know, you're, you're just trapped here. So you chose here for your own. Now, even though you may have chosen to come here, you would, I don't know how close you are to the Lord, if you have a, what they call a personal relationship, how devout you are, you know, how deeply rooted you are, but there is a way to address an audience who are just so eager to know a little bit more about the Lord. You know? okay. So, iba ang sa kanila. And there's a different kind of audience where you expect that they already have committed their lives to the Lord, and then you raise the standard a little bit more. Okay. I'm used to giving talks to those people who are medyo sigurado na ako na pwede ko silang pagalitan pagka hindi sila sumusunod sa, sa Panginoon. And as opposed to those who would just say, you know, it's like the marketing manager of the Lord. And I have to make him look good first so that he will be attracted to him. You know? uh, so, Lord, ikaw nang bahala, ha? Okay. Because uh, uh, I will try to make this as palatable to all of you without naman boring those who are, hey, boring, I've heard that before. Okay. So, um, may the Spirit of the Lord and His purpose be fulfilled for each one of us. And even if you come here and you get nothing, maybe the Lord has a purpose, as I said, for you to be here and maybe He spared you from being out there because your boss might be looking for you and maybe <laughs> making you do something that you really don't want to do. Okay. So even for that reason alone, praise God. Jehoshaphat's prayer. I will tell you the story of Jehoshaphat in a while. Uh, and by the way, Joseph will have uh, something to distribute to you so that it will be easier to relate to. You. But let me begin by talking about... Um, what everybody in the whole human race goes through problems. Anybody here has no problems? Nobody? Okay. Well, in the Bible, I will refer to the Bible often, Jesus says, <laughs> Jesus says, in this world, you will have troubles. Okay? Can you please Tell the person beside you, magkakaproblema ka. <laughs> Baka meron sa atin ngayon, may dinadaanan. Is that okay? I speak in Tagalog. Okay. Maybe there are some of us who are going through something now. Okay. And maybe those of us, there are some of us, hopefully many, who have no serious concerns serious problems. Okay? Guess what? Magkakaproblem. <laughs> no matter how trouble-free our lives are, because we're blessed, we're fortunate, whatever, the last thing that will happen to you is you will die. No okay. problem. Although some people now today, they will let us choose that option to escape their problems. I don't want to talk about that. But we want to begin with how we respond to the problems that come our way. And dahil mga Christian naman kayo, syempre, magdadasal tayo, no? Okay? And so, what I want you to do is to think about how you pray when you have a concern whether it's your concern or somebody else's concern who says, please pray for me. In fact, that's a good way, by the way, to evangelize and to tell people about the Lord. You can just go to anybody, any, you know, you you have a meal in a restaurant and you talk to the to the one who's serving you and just say, is there anything I can pray about for you? See whether that will open them up. I wish I could say the same thing to you, but... Uh, <laughs> well, if there's anything you want me to pray about for you, slip me a note. Okay. We all go through this. And we want to make sure that we respond to troubles the way 
we can do it to honor God. Sorry, how much time do I have? How much time do you have? Up to one. Okay. One minute. Whoa, okay. Well, just very quickly. When Jesus said, in this world you will have troubles, in the same venue when he said this, which was his last supper, and we know what happened to Jesus. That was his last supper. That was his desperate party. He was going to be executed the next day. Nobody knew what was going to happen, but he knew. And he was anticipating, this is not going to be fun. Okay. And he says, in this world you will have troubles. And he said to them, so, remain with me, okay? Because I want you to have my joy. A man who's about to face an unjust execution and is terrified will tell his friends, I'm happy. Can you say that? I mean, can you actually, you know, you go to a doctor for a checkup because you feel a lump in your breast. And by the way, you've already just gone through the tests. I, want, I don't know what tests you go through. And then you're going to visit the doctor again because you want to know what is the result. Will you be happy? <laughs> mm, afraid. And Jesus says, I felt the same way. I didn't know exactly what was going to go. I knew I was going to be crucified. And even though the decision was not yet there, he knew his father had conspired to make it happen, that this is going to hurt. And I dreaded. it. But he said to his disciples, oh, I'm going to go to my execution, but I want you to have my joy. And so, we want to know how to deal with the dread and the fear when we go through something really serious. And I hope we don't go through any of this. But, you know, who am I to question what Jesus says? We're going to have problems. We might as well face it and learn to deal with it with joy. And that's my purpose here. That we glorify God by being joyful in all circumstances. And I will introduce you to a way of prayer called the Bahala na prayer. Are you familiar with the Bahala na prayer? Huh? Are you? How many of us say this often? Bahala na. Okay. Well, let's turn that into a real prayer. Because you know where the word Bahala comes from, right? Okay. What does that mean? Whatever. Okay, Lord. Edi wow. The Bahala prayer. Okay, Joseph, can you please distribute? You did? You have it? Wow. Okay. Um, sorry, it's long, pero ATB naman kayo, matatalino kayo, mabilis kayo magbasa, pakibasa nga niya. Uh -huh. Very quickly lang. And I will show a video. Joseph? Can you show the video? Look, wait, they're reading something fast in the book. Okay. situation. 
His name was Jehoshaphat. Get ready. Jehoshaphat is just chilling as the king. Everything was good in the kingdom until one day, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Mayunites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Okay, so this is Jehoshaphat. This is the Moabites. This is the Ammonites. And these are the Mosquitoites. <laughs> Jehoshaphat was in some trouble. Did you catch that? Not just one army, or even two, but three whole armies! Yikes! What do you think Jehoshaphat did when he heard this terrible news? What would you do? Think about it. What do you do when things go wrong? How do you act when a friend is mean to you, or when someone in your family is sick? Or when you get in trouble for something that you didn't do? Do you pout? Or hit something? Or cry? Wanna guess what Jeho did? We call him Jeho for short. Jeho called all the people together, and he did something really simple. He prayed, O oh Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. See what he did? He prayed. Before he did anything else, he just prayed. And he told everyone else to pray too. He was king. He could do that. The Bible says that Jacob was really scared, but he didn't let that get in the way. Instead, he prayed such a great prayer that it's our memory verse this week. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. Jeho knew that God was the only hope for his kingdom. All of a sudden, all three of those armies turned on each other. What the heck? No, you don't. Can you believe it? Jehoshaphat learned a big lesson about prayer. He learned that God hears and answers our prayers. So here's our key question for today. How does God want us to pray? It's real easy. Just try these three things. One, thank God. Start by thanking Him for everything you have in your life. Two, pray for others. Think about what other people need and pray for that. And three, Pray for you. Ask God to help you with what you're going through. And kids, remember, God wants to help us in every situation. So do what King Jehoshaphat did. Pray. And the prayer of Jehoshaphat is the Baalana prayer. And what I want to do is, I want us to go through that prayer of Jehoshaphat and learn on the way that he prayed. Because, and I pray, pray that it will be helpful to you. So, think about the last time you prayed for something really, really serious. Well, you can pray about something that's not so serious, like finding a part in space, okay? or you can pray for something more serious. But think about the way we pray. In fact, there was an article that I read before that said, what happens when you close your eyes to pray? When we pray and we have a problem, do we actually pray or we process the problem? Sometimes we process the problem. 
-hmm. And sometimes the problems are so severe that we think about that before we go to sleep. And when we wake up, we think about it again. When we're taking a shower, we think about it again. There can be problems like those. I hope you don't have that, but magkaka problema. Might as well be prepared. We want to know how Joseph, Jehoshaphat prayed. Okay. So let's let's understand these verses first. What threat? What was the problem that Jehoshaphat was confronted with, and why was it serious? The little boy said. There were not just one, but not just two, but three armies. According to Bible scholars, they were so close to the city. Imagine, of course, Jerusalem is on the top of the hill. You're in Tagaytay. Your castle is there and your city is there. And the armies are, no, they're not in Silang. They're not in the Lisa down the hill. They're in Gourmet Cafe. That close, okay, to the Rotonda, Indonesia. Okay. Three armies. And by the way, when the Israelites were going through the desert, wandering, and the God was leading them to the Promised Land, there would be times when God would say, this nation, I want you to attack and annihilate them. Okay. And do not leave anybody Alive, no survivors, not even animals. Binan, binang binang battle plan ng Panginoon. Except for three nations, three tribes that God said, do not touch them. And guess what? It was these three tribes. Funny God. Okay. And now here they are. Okay. Serious problem. Medyo it took Jehoshaphat by surprise. And parang no time to plan, no time to act. Okay. We have problems like those, right? I mean, parang you, you're not prepared for these things. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I run a microfinance NGO, the Christian NGO, and uh, I, I cannot claim authority over this teaching because when we had a planning session with the board of directors, who are all Christians, and we asked a preacher to give us a little devotional at the beginning. This was his message for us. And I loved it, and I shared it with you. And uh, yesterday, I had a meeting with my senior officers, and our treasurer said, Sir, um, you know, we have 900 million pesos of credit line. NGO yan, ano? By the way, we have good rates. <laughs> proud ako. Too proud. I think that is something. Said, Sir, I'm going to run out of credit facility soon. And we foresee a large crest of lendings in the next few months. And, you know, the cash that we're churning and we're releasing to the clients and they're paying back to us is not enough to provide for that. So, sir, is it okay that uh, we reserve these funds and we will not reloan it to our clients? So, I did a Jehoshaphat prayer. was not prepared for this. Serious? Yeah, it closes down. <laughs> we could have a back run. If I don't release new loans to my clients, they would just say, something's wrong with the SBI. Oh, and then I won't have to buy it. Oh, wow. Okay. Our 2 billion peso balance sheet will disappear. So, have you ever encountered an enemy that overwhelmed you? If not you, somebody else that you know. Somebody you're counseling. And although I say, I hope this has not happened to you, <laughs> Jesus says, magkaka problem. How did you respond? What was Jehoshaphat's immediate reaction? Can you look at verse 3 to 4? What was his immediate reaction? Afraid. Although he might have had a good army, they just weren't ready. They were taken by surprise. 
you find out that you're sick, you get afraid. Fortunately, you have medical insurance. Yeah, but you know, you might discover that these kinds of illnesses, kukulangin, uh, all sorts of things. You find out that your child has a problem. You find out that your husband is the problem. <laughs> You're afraid. The question, is it okay to be afraid? Yes? Yes? Of course it's okay to be afraid. But, but it's not okay to be afraid. It's to stay afraid. Because God says, do not be afraid. Because he knows you're afraid. And you know, I'll share with you something. When I go through my readings, and then I go through one of these verses that says, do not be afraid. And I have no problems. And not to be afraid of. And Jesus says, the Lord says, do not be afraid. I said, okay, something's going to happen. pessimistic Is it okay to Yes. But then, it also says that he went to seek the Lord. We seek the Lord. We can have an entire retreat about seeking the Lord. But that's what Joshua did. He went to the Lord. Because what the fear should do to us is to bring us to the Lord. In fact, I think God uses problems in our lives in order to bring us closer to Him. It's so hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven because he doesn't need God. Pero pag nagkasakit yung kanyang anak, mapapalood yan. Tama ba? So, do not question the wisdom of God. He's not stupid. So, reflect. Can a person pray without faith? Yes? Of course, you know the answer is yes. I will not put it there. If the answer is obviously no, when you put it there. No. But you ask yourselves, how do I pray? What kind of faith do I have when I pray? And I will not go through the preacher's usual favorite line and say, don't believe and your prayer will be answered. The problem is you don't believe enough. And sometimes when something does not happen, if that does not happen, we blame ourselves and just said, there must be something wrong with my prayer style. You know, maybe I don't believe God enough. And you will go to the Bible. And my daughter goes to this herself and says, Papa, how come? How come? It says here, you ask and I ask. I don't get it. So, can a person pray without faith? Absolutely. Okay. Because many people pray to God whom they do not know. Whom they do not know. Sino bang kausap mo? Di ba? No, okay. when, I, uh, when I call the help desk of Sky Cable Workload, I don't know who I'm talking to. No? But I just give them my problem. <laughs> and many times when we pray, we just give the guy on the other end of the line, our problem. The help desk. Can a person pray without faith? Yeah. But will it be answered? I don't know. Okay. Do you ever find yourself, quote unquote, praying without really talking to the Lord? Okay. Maybe we just want to lay down our problems. Actually, we don't even lay down our problems. Let's look at the way Jehoshaphat prayed. Can you read verse 5 to 13 again? Just very quickly now. Okay. So we will go through each one of them. And I will ask you, there is a pattern to the way he prayed. So you read this 5 to 13 and just said, okay, there's supposed to be a pattern here. So in a pattern, that means there's a beginning, there's an ending, there's a middle, and there's a flow. Okay? And let's study the flow of his prayer. Okay? Because maybe this flow of his prayer is the one that will help us 
being the joy that Jesus promised to those who have problems. So, at the start, did you notice anything? What is his first few statements there? What was he saying? Alright? He was praising God. No? Did you see that? First thing he did, he praised God. He remembered who God is. This is who you are. In other words, kumakatok siya, nandiyan ba yung hari? Kasi kakausapit yung hari, di ba no? Siyempre, hindi mo naman kakausapit yung katulong na nagbukas sa pinto at kumihingin ka sa hari. Dapat harapin mo. Nasaan ba yung hari? Di ba? And that's what uh, seeking the Lord is, I don't want to talk to the main man who's in charge. Okay. And then when he faced God and he said, okay, you're here, ikaw nga ang Panginoon. This is who you are. Yung grabe, ang galing mo. Because God could easily ask us, why? Why are you why are you talking to me? It's not so much what do you need from me, but why me? And then you said, Well, because you're God. The Catholics signed the cross by saying, In the name of God. I don't know if you really mean it, but you know, I'm talking to God. And so the first part of his prayer is. God, you're great. Isip-sip ka muna sa Diyos, ano? <laughs> Dahil malaking hinihingi mo sa Kanya, ano? Okay. But that's only because you want to glorify Him. Sometimes, I'm tempted not to give God my prayers. Sorry, I'm a little neurotic like that. When I was a kid, there would be things I would ask my parents, right? and they would never give it to me. For the reason, but you know, it sort of hmm, affected the way I asked God for anything. I just said, hindi mo naman bibigay ko po na hindi. No? Diba? I mean, do you feel that way sometimes? Yet it does not honor God. Anytime we pray to Him, it gives Him honor. It says, oh, buti na lang tinulong ako. I mean, if you had a child or a good friend, somebody whom you really cared for, and then you knew and you were hoping that they would appreciate your being reliable, being there, and then they just say, Wag na lang kita ko sabi, wala kang mga palagi. Ang sakit ano? <coughs> and when you say that to God, you say, it's okay. Parang pinagbibigyan mong kami noon. Baka makahiya siya. So what Yehoshaphat did was the first thing he said, O Lord, the God of our fathers, here, aren't you God of heavens? Are you not the ruler over the kingdoms and the nations? Power and might are in your hands so that no one can stand about. Yun. Ikaw yun. And that's what he did. Number one, he remembered who God is. Number two, what did he do? Next, after verse six. What was he saying in verse seven? Don't look at the screen. Look at your words. What was he saying there? A pattern. We're looking for a pattern. What? 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 He is declaring, stating what? Reminding him of what he did before. So he remembered. Lord. Grabe. Nung nakita ko sa Bible na yung pilay pinalakad mo, ang galing mo. Nagawa mo yan. And the Israelites, when they pray, they always remember, you rescued us out of Egypt. Are you aware about God moving in your lives? If not in your life, are you aware of how he moves in other people's lives? It's hard to pray to God you do not know. So you can't even do number one, much less number two if you're not sensitive. And so, 
you can you can just go to God and say, well, in that, parang okay, sino ba ito kausap mo? Di ba? Parang, how do you know it's me you're talking to? No. Do you want to acknowledge him and just say, Sir, I came here with a proposal because I know you can do something about it. I talked to the president of our company. Why, sir? Because I know that you have authority and that you can do something because in the last time when I saw something happen, somebody reported to you and you did something about it. Well, sir, the reason why I'm coming to you now is because I think you can do something about this. That's what I did. And I reported to my president something. When we go to God, the same thing. So you think about how great God is, you think about how powerful He is and what He has done, and then the next thing, what do you say? Verse 8. What is He saying? So He remembered who God is, He remembered what He had done. Next. What? What is it? Yes. 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 What verse are we looking at? Verse 8. They have inhabitants of this land before your people and gave it to descendants. They have lived in it and have built their sanctuaries. Should evil come upon us, we will stand before this house before you. For your name's sake, be you in your mistress. And we will hear the deliverance. Did you not drive this out? And did you not tell us that when something happens to us, you will protect us? Okay. So what he did is, he's declaring and he's claiming the promise of God. Lord, you promised. How many of us have to file an insurance claim but we forget where we kept the insurance documents? Hindi mo makaklaim yan. Nakalimutan mo may pangako pala sa iyo, no? When you come before the Lord, the Lord has given many promises which you can claim. If you knew Him, if you studied His Word, you would, there would be many insurance documents there. Then just, just claim this. And that's what He was doing. Okay. You remember who God is? A great God, you remembered His power, and He remembered, by the way, you promised that you would do this. So that's verse 8 and 9, and then after this, what did He do? Verse 10. Let me tell you the problem. Okay. And by the way, I have a small problem. Yeah. You know, if you pray this way, you know, usually when we pray, the first thing we talk to God about is a problem. And, you know, the problem is so huge and so debilitating. It's paralyzing you. But if you pray this way, you see how big God is. You remember how great God is. You remember how much power He has and has demonstrated. And you remember how 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 He has promised. But, uh, Sige na, huwag na lang. Okay na, okay na tayo, di ba? Suddenly, your problem looks so little. But you state the problem. And guess how he stated the problem? As a problem. Usually, when we come before the Lord, we don't state the problem. We state the solution. Lord, pagalingin mo naman ang tatay ko. <laughs> Oh, ayaw kong pagalingin siya. Di ba? Kasalanan ko pa. Di ba? Maganda akong plano. Lord, sana matanggap ako sa trabaho. Sana mabayaran ko itong bud. Lord, we give the Lord the solution. I really, sorry, I don't use this word often, but I really hate it when I ask my driver to bring the car to the shop to have it repaired. Because the driver will tell the shop what to do. He doesn't tell you the problem. Go to a doctor next time and said, <laughs> so I called up my uncle once who's a doctor. I had stomach problems. So I said, you can chill. Ano ba ang gamot para sa intestinal flu? 
Kaso alam ko ano problema mo, ha? Okay, galing mo, ha? Sabi <laughs> So, state your problem as a problem. Lord, hindi na naman makahinga yung tatay ko. Lord, nagkaroon kami ng fraud. Lord, nawala yung cellphone ko. Lord, matraffic. Lord, wala parking. Yan. Hindi na lang. Just tell me your problem. Of course, he knows it. But, parang, mabuti na yun kasi ikaw magbigay ng solution. Kasi, parang, okay, alam mo naman pala ang solution. Eh, ikaw na. Maghanap ka na. Sleep problem. And then number five, what did he do? Hindi ko kaya yan. Kaya nga ako nagpunta sa iyo eh. Sometimes you might think, this is so obvious, why do you even have to pray? God knows everything. Hmm? But listen, there was a time when Jesus was going around Jericho and there was a blind man. And he knew already his subset. This guy was blind since birth. And he's been begging here for the longest time. And he's calling and leave Jesus, Jesus. And then he asked the blind man, Oh, what's wrong? What do you want me to do for you? Hey, bulag na yun, ha? Yun ang naman Jesus. He gives us a chance to express our concerns to the Lord. As opposed to another story in the life of Jesus when he went to this place called Bethesda, where they have this pool. You know, the story where if the angels search the pool, whoever is sick gets into the pool, the first one in, first one out. Okay. Well, it so happened that there was a paralyzed man there who was there for 30 years or more. Right? Something like that. Tagal na niya nandun. No, yung paralyzed man. Umaasa, eh pala, eh paralyzed, eh walang tutulong sa kanyang gumapang, gano'n no, ha? So, pero nung Yesus sa kanya, do you want to get well? You read that verse. And you know what the paralyzed man said? Hindi kaya eh. Hmm? You, know, you can see the despair of this person, parang hopeless na parang, wag na lang, nandito na ako, chill na lang ako dito. Okay. That's not the way we want to approach God and honor Him. Listen, I have a problem. You're a great God. You've done this before. And you, by the way, you said this, you promised this. And so this is the problem. And I cannot do it by myself. I must admit. And then finally, he said, Pero, bahala ka na. Nasa iyo na yung buhay ko. I trust you. Do what you need to do. You see this? You see this pattern? Do you see this and you compare this with the way you pray? Yeah. And you know what? I guarantee you! <laughs> well, sorry. We all have our neurosis. That if you go through this with your whole heart, by the time number six comes, you're at peace. You're at peace. And you say, I am God's. I am in God's trust in Him. And so that's what Yoshafat said. Hindi pa lang. Pero ikaw na lang. Sa iyo na lang ako maasa. And we know the story already how God acted. Okay. And so how did God speak to Joseph? How does God speak to us today? How does God speak to you? Does He? Well, for those of us who are new to this thing called God speaking to us, we will always ask a question, how do I know He's talking to me? So my six-year-old daughter, when she was still six years old, She's now 39. <laughs> then, oh, how do I know God talks to me? Well, did you ever ask him a question? You know, he would answer, how do I know? So, I know, I think she was eight years old. So I said, okay, well, 
the Bible is one way that He speaks to us. Boring, Papa. No. So, it is Mr. We were about to sleep. And then while I was resting already, I was dozing off. She screams and comes to the room, banging the door. Parang nakakita ng butike kasi ganyan. Takot sila sa butike. Oh my gosh! He spoke to me! <laughs> she asked him a question. She opened the Bible. She read it. Tumayo ba na hibo niya? God is sweet to us. He promised. Those who look for Him, you'll find Him. That's a promise. You need to look for Him with your whole heart. So how did God speak to the people? And what, in this particular case, what is the first thing that He told Jehoshaphat? But, verse 14, it's there. Somebody says, what He says here, He said 365 times in the Bible. What is it? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. My other daughter, she had a fear of dogs because when they were kids, they were playing. The dog was playing with them and the dog was chasing and some of her older cousins were saying, ay, 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 pretending to touch us. And to the influence of anak, what? Naging real sa kanya yung fear. And so, whenever we would go around, before we get down from the car, she would look around. She said, there's a dog. If there's a dog, she will not get out of it. So, I said, parang, huwag kang matakot. Gusto ko sabihin, ano, parang, well, nothing to be afraid of. But then there's something else that God says in that verse. That, <laughs> I said to my daughter, and that remove that fear. Because telling a person, do not be afraid, is very insensitive to that person's fears. Di ba, no? I mean, next time you have a friend who says, I know I'm going to see a doctor, he says, no, do not be afraid. Parang. Easy for you to say, buddy. And when I preach to the clients of the SBI, and I tell them to trust God, they look at me, dressed with this, easy for you to say, So it's hard to preach, do not fear, except something else in those verses that God says, that is a clincher. What is it? The battle is not yours, but God. What else? <coughs> the Lord be with me. And when I said that to my daughter, and I said, Come, Nikki. Come to me. I'll be with you. I said, I'm okay. Do not be discouraged, do not be afraid. Okay, this is my battle. And he gave instructions. As we know, there were specific instructions. And just show up in the battle. Okay, face your enemy. I will be with you. Do not be afraid. Did he say, sharpen your weapons? He just said, just show up. What can I of course, it's not always easy to do what God tells us to do. Okay? Not easy. But then he says, many times, we just say, ah, easy for you to say, hard to trust. But we need to get ourselves as you pray, as you pray, and I will sort of wind this up with just a few more slides. Most of the time, God will tell us to do something. And most of the time, it's not easy. Okay. Uh, if you're not ready to do the hard thing before you even ask God, 
If you're not ready, wag mo na lang tanongin. Di ba? Wag mo na lang tanongin dahil mahirap ang pagagawa niya sa atin. Ang pagagawa niya sa atin ay magtiwala ka sa akin. Mahirap yan. Patawari mo yung kalaman mo. Naman, naman. Di ba sabi ko, upakan mo siya? Di ba? Ay, gusto mo patawari mo. Di ba? Huwag ka nalang magtanong kung hindi ba hanggang. Dahil may insulto lang ang Panginoon. Magkakasala ka pa. No? So, mapaalam ka. Lord, gusto mo naman mag-abroad. Uh, gusto mo pa nagpapaalam ka ba o gusto mo alaman ang gusto ko? Di ba? Kaya nga kita ginawang Pinoy eh. Kaya ginawa naman kita ng negro. Luka na. So what is God's formula for encouragement? I just said it. To encourage us when we are in fear, He just says, Well, I will be with you. Does He promise He will solve your problems? I wish I can say this. But it depends. You will solve your problem. But it's not the way you want to see it. And you better be prepared. Because if there's anything God is more interested in changing, is not your situation, but you. Really. Why you pull a Lord? I'm okay. I like myself. It's my situation. I don't like. Well, sige, jangka na lang. And then you continue to be immersed in your despair and your fear and that's exactly what God wants to address your anxiety, your fear, your worry I had a long time ago I invested in a small fish pond in the north nung uso pa yung export ng prawns etc. di na tukso si Eduardo magtayo na ganun I was still working for a, for a conglomerate here in Makati I would go there on weekends and then fly back here and then drive back here when there was less traffic then when there was an announcement in the news that there was a storm passing through the north and I was in a prayer meeting then here in Makati and I told my friend I said pag pray mo naman kasi may bag yung darating sa daon yun o sige pag pray natin na yung bag yun sabi huwag yung bag yung pag pray mo ako O bakit ikaw? Kasi natatakot ako, dapat hindi ako matakot. It's the fear that is the enemy. And that's why God will banish all that fear. He said, don't be afraid. Don't you trust me. So, if I gave another sermon here about trusting God, that's the first thing I would ask people. Do you trust God? And everybody said, yeah, I trust God. Then I'll get through their problems. Did you ever experience fear or anxiety? Did you immerse yourself there? Then that means you don't trust God. And so, what does he say this? Okay. If you only knew who this God is, who says, I will be with you, then you will feel so much peace. If you knew who God is, you're in banking or some mega banking, BBB. No? Okay. It's all based on trust. But you have to do your due diligence. You gotta know the character and the capacity of the person before you lend money to them. Right? Okay? Same thing with God. How can you trust God if you don't know His character and His capacity? And the prayer number one is His character. I know who you are. Number two, His capacity. I know what you've done. And by the way, you have a promise only not, so I trust you. It's actually easier to trust man than trust God. You know why? Because the man, you can get even. When it comes to that, uh, hey, iba naman pala. my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. You thought I was going to solve that problem, but actually that problem is for you. I have a bigger problem that I needed to solve, and that was part of the solution. So, there are many stories in scripture that 
what they ask for is not exactly what God gave, but because they had a better plan. And so, what Jesus says in his prayer, let me skip this, we need to know that when Jesus says, you're going to have problems, trust me. We choose today whom you will trust in your prayers. Because it's a choice. It's not a feeling. And it's an intelligent choice. You have to know who God is. And it's good that you keep coming to sessions like this because it increases your knowledge of who God is. And there are stories of people, you know what He has done and what He can do. And so, let me just very quickly tell you three things before we end because this is what you need to find out and investigate. That God is in control. That God knows what He's doing. He does not make mistakes. And that He cares for you. Okay. An entire seminar on each one of those topics. But until you know these truths, then it's hard to trust God. The last slide here is the prayer of Jesus. The only thing that can happen in your life is what God allows. Let me just preach to Jesus in the Garden of Olives when he's about to face his death. The only thing that will happen to you is what God allows. No worry, son. It's going to hurt, but may plan on So I have a reason. And you need to trust God for that reason. And your prayer should be as Jesus said. Okay. I don't like it. I don't even know why you're doing it. But not my will, but yours. I just trust you. Ikaw na ang bahala. Okay. So, bahala na si Lord sa inyo. Sana bumalik kayo next month. Pero kung meron kayong dinadaanan ngayon, okay, tanoy mo na lang sa katabi mo. Is there anything I can pray about for you? Okay. And then, sorry, last. And then, instead of giving them a prayer, anybody who has a problem, you know, just said, I will pray for you. No. Give them something. Something about who God is. Something about what God has done. Or something that He has promised. That will be very encouraging. Thank you very much, Dr. Eddie. Um, we know um, the prayer of Jehoshaphat is a very powerful prayer, but uh, beyond that, uh, it is because we have a very powerful God. Uh, so, if you have any question for Eduardo, Dr. <laughs> Eddie, <laughs> um, you can have one or two questions. Uh, and then there's an announcement. The next one is about healing your body naturally. There's a doctor who will be coming here, but with a uh, spiritual uh, aspect in, in the healing process. Come on. August. Second Thursday. Second Tuesday of August. Thursday of August. Questions before we uh, break for. Uh, for work, for work. <laughs> we bring for work. <laughs> no? Okay. Thank you very much for coming here.